YouTube, it's me again. Welcome back to the house of Dula, glad to have you as always. And welcome to my garage. Today we are going to be installing a new pedal assembly. So this video will apply to you with any Fox Body Mustang if you're swapping out the pedal assembly. Say you want to convert maybe to um, an automatic from a manual, or maybe you want to convert to a manual from an automatic, um, and you want to switch out the entire pedal assembly uh, to a combinated clutch or you know, a brake pedal and no clutch uh, for an automatic. So what we're doing on this car, but it's a little bit different and it's because this car actually had an auto, uh, a manual transmission. This was, this was a, a four-speed manual, okay? This is a, had a rug transmission, of course it's a 79 coupe, so it had a 2.3 liter, liter engine with a four-speed manual transmission. However, when we put the EcoBoost in here, we're switching out to either the T5 or later even like a TKO or something like that. But right now we're gonna be using a T5 board, so we're gonna be switching in a five-speed manual. So we're gonna keep the car to its original roots, keep the manual transmission theme going. However, I had to switch the pedal out. Now you're wondering why, Mike? Let's talk about that real quick. Ugh. So if you're switching manual to manual, you may be wondering why I switched the pedal out. Because it's not until Ford introduced the T5, which I could be wrong, it may have been 84. But anyways, this transmission that was in the car, the rug transmission had a completely different style of clutch cable system. It does not have a quadrant. So the clutch cable type on this car when it was stock was attached directly to the clutch pedal and all the adjustments were done at the transmission itself. On the late model Mustangs, as you get into the T5s like most people have in their cars, um, you have your quadrant here at the uh, the pedal. Now the quadrants were there to uh, make up for any kind of wear and tear as your clutch worn down or as the cable is stretched. You can simply lift up on uh, the clutch pedal and that would click and make up for the slack. So it's essentially self-adjusting, okay? So as most of you guys know, people get rid of the self-adjusting mechanism because they're plastic, they're kind of junky, and they switch them out with a, a, a aluminum co co um, quadrant component that makes it, you know, your shifts a little bit faster too. Your action, your, your clutch pedal a little bit faster. And the adjustability is then switched from the quadrant itself to uh, the firewall here with an adjustable cable. So basically the, the clutch assembly, the clutch pedal and pedal assembly itself is completely different to accommodate the quadrant, okay? For on a T5. So that's why we have to switch it out. So I'm putting a T5 in here, so we have to put a Pedal assembly from a you know a T5 model uh, Mustang, and we also had to switch out the firewall adjuster. All right, so in some of my earlier videos, I went ahead and put this in. Now this is where the clutch cable obviously comes out, loops around, and attaches to your transmission um, to disengage the clutch. Okay, this is how it is on on all manual transmission Mustangs here. Even on the 79, it was right here. Um, however, this accommodated a completely different style clutch cable i don't think i've got it but the clutch cable would come out of this hole and it had it, it was a smaller hole um, and then it was fixed here at the firewall and it went down into the transmission so the cable comes from the transmission through a fixed component here this is what you know draws tension on the line or on the cable itself and then it was attached directly to the clutch pedal which you'll see in here now i've already disconnected the clutch cable and pulled it out of the car and I did that because I had intentions of coming down here and installing this Maximum Motorsports Quadrant. And it was just until I found out that, hey, this cannot fit on here because there's, there's absolutely no provisioning. There's no existing quadrant for this to replace. Not even the same thing at all. And um, we'll get to that. Whenever I pull it out, you'll be able to see the difference. But let me show you the new pedal assembly we have to replace it. Purchase this pedal assembly. I don't even remember where to be perfectly honest. Um, and you can see here is a factory pedal assembly with the quadrant. So on this car, the cable literally has an arm and the cable drag uh, connects directly to the arm. There is no quadrant. There's no wrapping around here. So this is what I'm talking about. On the manual assembly here, if you look at it, this is how it's adjusted. So the cable basically rolls around the top, clips into here, that groove right there and as the clutch pedal is depressed you know it pulls on the cable thus disengages the clutch this will adjust as it as it needs to make room uh, for wear and tear so this is kind of cool so we can assemble this with the quadrant 
in here. And while we're here, we're also going to be installing, switching this out, and we're going to be installing the uh, clutch safety switch that comes with a Ford Motorsport um, control pack for a 2.3 liter EcoBoost from our 2015 EcoBoost. Since this is getting a um, 2.3 EcoBoost from a 2015 Mustang, we have the control pack from Ford that has its own neutral safety switch, or I'm sorry, clutch pedal switch that has to be, you know, pressed in before the car can start. So we're gonna look that up. We're gonna see if we can't alter this mechanism here and go ahead and install the brand new Ford mechanism so that this is ready to go. But first, this is nasty. I'm not about to put this in my car the way it looks. So we're gonna disassemble this and uh, take all the pieces out, put in the bead blaster and start restoring this thing. Make it look new. media glass beating and uh yeah this thing's all ready for paint don't really, really want to touch it um you'll get oils the oils in your hands will just cause it to rust so really should be wearing gloves but yeah this is gonna look really good um it's getting kind of late so tomorrow i'll get a nice coat of paint on all of this stuff and uh we'll start reassembling it All right, man, check this out. So this is the pedal assembly now disassembled, cleaned up, and painted. I painted this with SEM bumper coat, satin black, and a little bit of a hammered um, silver, just Rust-Oleum hammered silver. Kind of give it that OEM, you know, look uh, with the silver on top and the black stripe on the bottom. I don't think both pedals had it, but it doesn't matter. It looks awesome. So this is kind of the look I'm going with here. This is nice, clean up. That paint lays out real smooth. As far as I'm concerned, this thing looks brand new. It looks nice to me. So now we have everything laid out. We're gonna put everything back together. And this time, instead of putting on the plastic quadrant that we pulled off, we're gonna actually be installing uh, this new aluminum one here. I say new. I have no idea if it's new, but it's the one I've got. All right, so we're gonna install it. And just like that, it's been restored. Hey, check this out. Look at this thing now, man. So you remember this is all rusty. It's all nasty. So. I decided to make a video on every single thing I did to this and step by step doing it. Then I realized it's going to be an hour long because it's, you know, I'm video everything. So, hey, all I did, get everything completely sandblasted and then painted uh, the pedal assembly here, silver and black, and painted the whole structure black and then put the quadrant on. I had to modify the pedal assembly just a little bit for the quadrant. Uh, there was a stop here, a lip that was kind of hanging up. Um, the clutch pedal was, was hitting right here. On the aluminum so it wasn't going all the way down so it wasn't resting at its normal spot in the uh the fully up position <laughs> okay hold that thought don't do this i cut this off and i thought it needed to be cut off but it does not as you can see in this video the correct spot is actually the quadrant's paw not on the arm itself so i actually had to weld it back in place so that it would rest properly on the maxim motorsport quadrant so don't do this and learn from my mistakes so there's that, looks pretty nice. A little bead blasting, doesn't hurt anybody, man. But the other side, this is where the goods is happening. Check this out, this is a modified EcoBoost, actually it's, it's, this is the EcoBoost switch from the Ford control pack that's needed. This needs to be depressed in for the clutch pedal, it needs to be pressed in for the car to start. So I've modified actually the housing, this ended up working perfectly. What I did was take a piece of scrap steel and then weld it up against the arm here. And then I welded it in such that I knew this was going to depress in. I had a good spot to put it when it was pressed in. But you can see there's just a hair bit of daylight there. And I rolled the edge. I don't know if you can see it in there, guys. But I rolled 
the edge of that plate here. So as soon as you start pressing the clutch pedal in, um, it presses it all the way in. Now you can see this is all the way in. Actually, believe it or not, this is pressed all the way in. So the travel is just absolutely perfect. So we got perfect travel here for the EcoBoost. So this is ready to go. I got the uh, clutch safety switch here. So the clutch has to be pressed in to start the car. This pedal is completely restored. It needs some new pads and is ready to go. If you ask me, it looks pretty awesome. But this is the kind of detail I want to put on the whole car is little things like this and that in my opinion makes it and um yeah look at that boom all right let's get the pedal assembly out of the old one get the new one in so real quick here you're gonna have to make some room you have to make some room to get underneath your dash you just are um you don't necessarily have to remove your seat but just know you're gonna be up in there now i've already done um the hard work, if you will. I've already unbolted the booster because the booster holds on half the pedal. So you've got four bolts in the back of the pedal assembly that is held on next to your booster. Your, your pedal assembly essentially squeezes up with the booster, so your booster bolts go through the pedal assembly, and you've got four on the bottom going up to your steering column. Once you see this, it's actually pretty easy to understand. So if you look at the bracket and you imagine this hanging on your car, like so, that is where your brake booster attaches to. So your brake booster goes through your pedal assembly and you got four bolts. You've got one here, here, you have a bolt there, there, and then up there. So that's where your four bolts go to your, your booster. And then also you've got two here on the, on the back side of the pedal assembly and two here. So both these are on your steering column. Let's go down the car and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so it should be eight bolt total holding your pedal assembly in. Now you can see here on my 79, you've got, I've got them loosely fitted, but right here, oh, uh, get some good light back here. I know it's the bowels of the dash here, but you got one there, and again up there, and you've got two on the other side. So you have one here and then one right above it. So again, those are gonna be your four to your um, your master cylinder and brake booster. And then also your brake booster itself comes in and attaches to the brake pedal, which you can see is the case. Good Lord, holding a camera and light at the same time, difficult. And you've got this one right here. Um, so yeah, that's where the brake pedal connects to your uh, master cylinder and brake booster. So. There's the four on the back of the firewall, then you've got one here and here. This is your steering column bolts, okay, but this is the uh, pedal assembly right here. You can see it there and there. And you've got two here. So you've got one there and then one right here as well. So one, two, three, four, and then four on the back. Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. You could do this with a column drop like this, but you can see all, with all four um, of the bolts on the steering column removed and with it removed from the steering shaft that goes to your rack and pinion, this thing is gonna put a lot of weight down onto your wires here. So all the stretch right now is just pulling the wires. I don't really like that. Now, normally, if I had the rack and pinion hooked up, this would only drop so far, and if I had the seat here, this would fall down and hit the seat and it wouldn't be so bad. With that in case, you could probably wrangle the pedal assembly out, but in my case, since this car is being stripped, I'm gonna just take the extra time and take the steering column out. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm gonna take the steering column out. It just needs to be pulled out anyways. That gives me a chance to, you know, look at the steel, replace the steel, and also clean up the steering shafts as well. Okay, if you watch my dash removal video, you will remember that there is a bolt to hold your dash up against um, a bracket. This bracket that it holds it up against to is your clutch assembly or your pedal assembly. So what that means, guys, is we gotta take this guy off as well. So we're gonna use a 3-8 here and spin it off. We're going about this together, guys. So there's another 3-8, or actually a 9-16 up here in the center. Big bolt. Good size. 916 bolt there should. Yeah, I was gonna say we should be loose now. Oh, you see, yeah, so these have 
these little lock clips on the lock clips on the back uh, hang on to your pedal assembly we need to transfer those to the new pedal assembly however up front here we have the same thing so we've also got a bracket here going back to the pedal assembly here and here so this is looks like the plate that is man holding up your uh, lower dash and your fuse panel here so we got to get these guys off as well I'll try to spin this off we can okay keep these guys together here free okay now that we got them both out we can really sit them side by side and take a look at the difference one of the key things i noticed now I'm, listen this is a complete pedal assembly because i had to one i want to clean this up also i needed to install uh, the clutch switch on it it was better for me to you know do all this out of the car but looking at this if you were to just swap from a manual to a um an automatic or an automatic to a manual um i think this could be easily done just by switching the clutch pedal out um rod just the clutch rod out the clutch rod or let's just say you're on an early model uh, four-speed manual and you want to convert to a t5 five-speed um, again you can just change the clutch rod out it looks like you can just pull the rod out and then change you know the bracket on the brackets completely different here uh, for the quadrant than it would have been here for your standard your clutch cable going on this pivot point here for the 79 model so that being said if you are converting just from an early style four cylinder to a t5 you could probably do this by just unbolting the clutch uh, pedal pivot point here the rod unbolting it pulling it out you know taking this bracket off pulling it out and then putting one of these brackets on or sliding one of these on putting it in that way you could probably get away with doing that now me I wanted to convert also converting to power let me show you something about the brake pedal speaking of power versus manual look at this difference in the uh, pedal length so the pedal length here actually is shorter and this was a manual car versus this being on a power boosted car. So this has a longer uh, pedal, believe it or not. I thought it was the other way around. I actually thought you'd have a, a shorter pedal um, for manual to give it more leverage, but it does change the pivot point. The pivot points for both of my um, master cylinder connections are in a different spot. And not only that, the brake pedal is mounted much higher into the cage. You can see it's mounted up here versus down here, almost below uh, the clutch rod. What's interesting is they have provisionings for both locations on the cage here. So we have a point here for the lower pedal, or for this pedal, and a point up here for this one. You can see on the side of this guy, it's mounted in the upper hole versus on the lower hole. Now this one does also have the lower hole in it, so it just must be a difference between manual versus um, power assisted brakes. So being that this is a power assisted pedal and we're putting a booster in it, this is going to be the correct setup and correct pedal assembly. But that's something also to know if you're converting from manual um, to auto is the difference in the pedal location, um, the length and also the pivot point, meaning where the relationship between where it starts pushing into the master cylinder and brake booster or master cylinder in this case, um, in relationship to its length and distance from the pivot rod itself. So this is a much shorter distance versus this distance here. So all this has to do with, you know, <laughs> leverage and um, you know, helps the pedal assist on a manual assisted versus automatic, or in this case, a power boosted assisted brake setup. So we're gonna start moving over some of the hardware and get this thing back up in place. I also noticed that instead of having a hole here, the later models, they put a divot in here, which means it's gonna be a little bit easier to slide up in place. It was a little bit of a chore, but it doesn't matter. We're getting there. We're good. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and put this together and um, start moving these cage nuts, these cage bolts here on this and slide this guy in. Okay, put this in, in the reverse that came out. So I was pushing on the bracket and uh, it finally popped over the threads and my finger went flying and hit the corner. Oh. If you learn anything from me, hopefully you learn that the struggle is real. There is no cutting to and just having things done without explaining how difficult things are. This is a pain in the butt. Put a little cut on my uh, cuticle there, but that's no big deal. I'm good. The uh, clutch pedal, however, 
not so much. Okay, I don't know if you can see there or not, but basically the clutch quadrant is straight up hitting the uh, the car. So we got to pull it out, and I'm going to make some clearance here, or try to fold that in so that doesn't hit. But yeah, clearly Ford put a brace there without you know um, needing the clearance for the quadrant, so wasn't a big deal in '79. All right, a little bit of a torch and a hammer, and now we've got plenty of room. Hopefully you can see that, right? Look at that, huh? Plenty of room. No rubbing. Everything's good. So let's get it all bolted back in place. Put the steering column back in. Paint it black and put it back. Throw the steering column back in. Um, looks much better now. It's got a fresh coat of black paint on it. So now when it's sticking to the firewall, it doesn't look all nice and rusty. If you guys know where I can get a seal for this, the firewall rubber seal, everything I see online is at 87 to uh, 93. And I can't find one that has, you know, specific to a 79 to 86. I don't know why they're different. But anyways, I'm looking for a firewall seal for a 79 Mustang. I like to replace a rubber seal that goes around this on the firewall. Anyways, I want to show you all something kind of something kind of I'm going to try here. So if you don't want a stock Mustang, there's actually a, a seal right here. There's a foam seal that goes in between. And now these deteriorate and fall off. I've got an extra piece of headline here, but on the back side of it, the foam is real similar uh, to what these are stock. So this kind of gives it a clean look whenever you put the plastics on it. You can't really see all the you know, mechanics. And I want to try to use this. I'm going to cut a couple holes in it, a couple slits in it, and slide it down and see how it works. Give it a shot. If it looks like crap, I'll pull it out. All right, that is it. We are done. What do you think about that, huh? Looks all right. Not a bad seal. Looks pretty good. Looks factory. Got a string column button backed in. Everything back together. Pedals are up. They're in. They look good. Everything is functioning the way it should. Brake is hooked up. Brake lights are hooked up. And um, we're one step closer to fitting the engine. So, listen, man, it's going to close it out. Hey, as always, follow me on Instagram. Because if you follow me on Instagram, you will get notifications on some of the stuff I'm working on ahead of time. Kind of give you a heads up on the projects before it comes on YouTube. That's cool. You can also go to houseofdoula.com. If you go there, you get kind of a compilation, compilation, combination of everything. Uh, the Instagram feed, the Facebook group, and, um, yeah, all the videos, of course. So, Check out houseofdoula.com, and otherwise, we're wrapping this up. We'll see you next time for the brake and saw video and for the motor fitments. Those are coming up soon. We're dropping the EagleBoost in. Stay tuned. Project EagleBoost. Peace out.